you are watching the installation guide for the Float Kit X series. So this is the intelligent float switch kit which has a thought process behind it. Now it doesn't matter whether you're using kit 1, kit 2, kit 3 or any of the other ones, this one will work for any variant. The only difference is for kit 1, 3 and certain other ones you have two float switches. Kit 2 only has one float switch, that's the only difference. So let's get started. We're going to begin by taking a look at our board. Step 1. Preparing the board and mounting the feet. OK, so we're going to begin by assuming that you already have an idea of what type of enclosure you're going to be mounting your circuit board in and what type of tank you've got to work with. Most people already have a tank and they're simply adding this kit to it. But if you're not sure, then we'll give you some suggestions later. But as for your enclosure, we don't supply an enclosure with the kit as standard because we don't know what else you have to go inside yours. You may be adding additional relay switches, control panels, you may be adding additional fuses, circuit breakers. Because we don't know this and we don't know what fitting you have, we supply self-adhesive feet. So at this point we're going to mount our feet on our circuit board. They push into the corners, try not to wiggle them. Once you have your feet mounted, all you need to do is peel the self-adhesive labels off the back and they will stick straight to the inside of your enclosure. Make sure surfaces are dry and if in doubt we recommend you clean the surface with alcohol. Once your circuit board is firmly mounted inside we can move on to the next step but at this point you should consult your user manual and familiarize yourself with the layout of the pins and go down the basic safety recommendations. Step 2 Float switch in tank. Okay, so now we're moving on to the float switch itself and its installation into the tank. So, one little note if you have figured out already where you're going to be mounting your circuit board enclosure, then you will obviously need to work out how long the wires need to be to carry the signal from the switch to the circuit board. So, if you need to extend the cables on your float switch, now's the time to do it. For an instruction video on how to do that, we may do this separately another time, but you should make sure you encapsulate any joins on your wires with silicon, or you can use self-adhesive heat shrink, so that's heat shrink that glues itself to the wire. So as for the tank itself, you're going to need to drill holes in your tank. Make sure you have your float switch ready, and don't press too hard if you're working with a thin plastic tank. We're using a brittle plastic tank for these demonstrations it's actually designed for storing clothes but you can use a proper tank for your real installation which will probably be made of something like fiberglass so make sure you drill carefully if you're using the standard black float switches that come with the kit then you're going to need a 16 millimeter hole we would recommend some sort of a circular hole file so that you can smooth the burrs on the hole and reduce any chances of this leaking so make sure you get a good seal between your washer and the tank and your float switch should sit nice and snugly against the plastic. Once you've done this, you can put the washer on the inside and the nut you thread over the wires on the outside and you can do this up by hand. You don't need to use spanners just because it's a hexagonal nut does not mean you need to tighten it right down. You tighten this by hand until the seal is bulging and at this point, if you wish, especially if you have a large tank, you can add silicon to the outside. The back of the switch is waterproof, but it may be best to add additional silicon if you believe that there's a chance that this is going to be exposed to heavy water or weather. Step 3. Enclosures and mounting. So, we need to bear in mind that some people choose to install the circuit board into the enclosure first, other people choose to install the enclosure into their location before the circuit board gets fitted. But either way, regardless of which way you're doing that, you preferably want to drill the holes or remove the plugs that you're going to use to put the cables in and out of your enclosure first, before any mounting occurs. You want to have the enclosure or junction box pre-drilled. So at this point you need to consider how many wires you've got going in and out, but you're likely to need cables from the float switch going in, power going in, and then your device coming out, such as the power lead going to your pump or solenoid. We recommend using this self-adhesive double-sided foam tape. This is the same tape that they use to attach number plates to cars, so as you can imagine it can withstand vibrations, 
it can withstand a bit of water getting in there. It's not going to lose its stick. But make sure you stick it onto shiny surfaces. If you have got a rough textured enclosure or wall, it's not going to hold. It will fall off. If you're mounting on a wall or a post, we recommend the use of screws or nuts and bolts or using wall plugs and suitable seals. Alrighty then, so that covers the first three steps completed of our installation guide. There are about nine steps in total, so you need to catch the next section of this video in part two on our YouTube channel. Speaking of which, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time. See ya!